A very warm welcome wherever you're watching and welcome to this CNBC debate live from Davos. Um, the timing of this event is extraordinary. We've just had the European Central Bank step up to the plate with a QE program that the markets have decided they can work with. The topic of our debate here today is recharging Europe. And no doubt we're going to talk a little bit in the context of recharging Europe about what QE is going to mean for Europe going forward. I have a wonderful panel here for you today, so let's introduce them. Let's start with Wolfgang Schäuble, the German finance minister. Welcome. George Soros is here from the Soros Foundation. We have Ignizio Visco, the governor of the Italian Central Bank. George Osborne, the UK Chancellor. And Luis de Guindos, sitting right next to me, the Spanish Finance Minister. Thank you for all being with us on this CNBC debate, and thank you, our audience, for the very warm reception. So let us um, get started here with the first question. And I'd like, if possible, to ask you, Governor Visco, because we've had this significant announcement from the European Central Bank. You were part of the process. Why was the size and timing more important than the element of risk sharing? Well, you never compare various elements. It was important to have a decision that was a consensus decision. We had a unanimity in deciding that this was a tool that can be used for monetary policy. And we had a very large majority, a very large majority, to decide that this was the moment to use it. The consensus was important because this is a single monetary policy decision. We are a central bank for the euro area, and we look at the euro area, we don't look at individual countries in the decision. Then there was an issue which was uh, very importantly considered by some, some of us, uh, others uh, didn't uh, consider it very much, that uh, given the fact that we are not in a fiscal union, then risks uh, have to be uh, carefully evaluated. But I think this is uh, a secondary element vis-a-vis -vis the size, the composition, and the timing of the decision. So you're very comfortable that in no way does the 80% burden falling on national central banks, that in no way damages the foundation of the Eurozone, that there should be mutuality. No, I agree with that. This is uh, an element which was discussed. There is a risk of financial fragmentation that we uh, some, some emphasized. There is a counterpart. Uh, okay. The fact that uh, we, we are going to be pretty sure that uh, there will be behavior on the part of governments that will make risks less than they may appear, and this implies that interest rates may benefit from that. Um, you are all in some way part of the process or the machinery of government and policy making, except George Soros, who is a market participant, although I understand, George, from your dinner the other night, you claim to be less actively involved in the hedge fund than you used to be. But let me ask you, you've been a vocal critic of what you've perceived to be Germany's reluctance to allow fiscal and monetary policy to assist Europe at this difficult time of crisis. Did Germany just get outmaneuvered, or does this package still fall short of what we need in Europe? Well, uh, I remain a critic uh, because a, a balance between fiscal policy and monetary policy would do the job better, and it would not create other imbalances which, uh, as, um, uh, uh, relying only on monetary policy uh, can uh, create uh, because it works uh, in depressing the, the value of the, of the euro which of course helps ex exports uh, and of course it will uh, um, 
create a possibility of an asset bubble, which can have other uh, negative effects. But uh, my main concern, actually, is that it will uh, make uh, the divergence between rich and poor uh, bigger than, than, it, uh, than it already is, because it will benefit the owners of, of, of assets, uh, and actually uh, wages will remain under pressure through competition and uh, uh, un, uh, unemployment. Uh, so uh, this will, I think, uh, 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 reinforce a, a major concern, which is the difference between rich and poor, uh, and it will have uh, political consequences. We have seen dramatic movements on the single currency. The euro has dropped below 112 even as we speak here. That's the first time since 2003. In spite of your concerns, the policy is having its expected effect, isn't it? It's starting to make the market's expectations change. De definitely. The sheer size of, of the, the massive uh, injection uh, and, and the duration and so on uh, will have undoubtedly an, an effect. Uh, it will also have, of course, uh, a, a lot of effect on international currency markets. And if I were uh, still active uh, in, the, in the business, I could see some fairly substantial moves coming. And uh, uh, financial instability can also have uh, can create dislocations and uh, turmoil from time to time. So those are the negative effects. And all this would be better if you had a, a better balance between fiscal policy and, and uh, monetary policy. Ladies and gentlemen, um, there will be time to call your brokers when we get to the end of the program, okay? <laughs> so don't rush to take your phones out quite yet. Um, Finance Minister Schäuble. Can I come to you? At the end of the day, was it more important, do you think, to preserve the perceived independence of the European Central Bank than uphold German objections to QE? Look, the independence of the Central Bank in Europe is given and is to be respected. And therefore, we have, that is the problem for, of the underlying problem of the European Currency Union. We have one monetary policy but we have different fiscal and economic policy, and therefore the burden for the ECB is very high to, to stick with one monetary policy, but it's different. Therefore, I don't comment uh, decisions by ECB, never, never ever, because the monetary policy is up to the Central European Central Bank. And they do their job very well. And I trust. That is not the problem. We have, uh, we as government have to care on fiscal policy, and then economic policy. By the way, we do it in Germany rather good. I think uh, George uh, Osborne has listened carefully uh, to Mr. Soros uh, in, in some way because uh, don't, uh, don't forget the lessons of history. Uh, and uh, having said this, because I must do as well this, I would like to say, if I got it right, the president of the ECB, Mario Draghi, in presenting the decision of the ECB yesterday in TV, said... Don't believe that monetary policy can prevent growth. That's up to national politics, fiscal policy and economic policy. Therefore, we, we have to care on growth. They have to fight, they have to, uh, to, to, to prevent price stability. That is the mandate of CCB. They, they do it very well, and they have to fight the risk of deflation. That's fine. I will not comment. But they can't, and that is the, the only problem we see, what is called the moral hazard. It would, some people could misunderstand that they have not to do what they have to do as governments, as parliaments and so on, because uh, to implement structural reforms is always a difficult political task. I can be, because uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, you need majorities, stable majorities okay. in member states. That is uh, also, therefore, I will not intervene in the discussion on the decision on the monetary policy. It's fine. We do our job, and I think uh, we, we, uh, we have strengthened uh, 
uh, economy and, uh, and, and fiscal policy. Well, let, and, let me break in, in for a moment. Of that. I think we're very clear on what your position is with regard to structural reform. Um, but let me ask you again, um, is this in any way likely to increase German fears of backdoor deficit financing now for countries like France, perhaps, maybe Italy, that are perceived to have been slow on structural reforms? Look, I, I, I know what I am saying, and I know what you would want to, what I would say, but I, I don't want the same to say what you want to mean. <laughs> <laughs> to be very clear. This, uh, this we, we, we are, once again, of course you, you can see in, 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 in of course in German uh, media there is uh, a very difficult reaction on the decision on the DCB yesterday, but that's the independence of institutions, and that is, uh, that is one of the principles of, of Western democracy, that you have checks and balances and independent institutions. But if you, are, is, if you are convinced that the independence of institutions is right, and I'm totally convinced, well, then you have to respect. And you must not ask who has been defeated. Or well, let, let, let you me have to say, you. everyone has to, has, has to stick to its own responsibility. My responsibility is fiscal policy, economic policy. Well, Perhaps you can comment then on some of the reaction, because in the German papers today, there are Germans who have been asked how they feel, and one of the, one of the quotes was, this is what has happened to my money. So the message very clearly from the German public is this is not a welcome step. I, I, I have read it, yes. <laughs> but you, you, look, it's, 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 I think we should not waste our time to play a game. I will not, I will not play it.